So my father was treated as leader of the opposition, although they were not big enough to become an official opposition. And he used to make the, uh, uh, I remember the, uh, bu bu uh, the uh, budget speech in reply to the uh, union budget every year. And he was very good with his economic, um, uh, very incisive surgical kind of uh, uh, attacks on the government's budgets. He had his fing figures always at his fingertips and was a very good public speaker. So his budget speech was always quite a big event. The Lok Sabha would be packed for it. I went as a visitor on one or two occasions as a child and, uh, you know, watched him uh, crossing swords with Nehru's finance minister, T.T. Krishnamachari, and then uh, later Muraji Desai, and of course Nehru himself, who took parliament quite seriously and participated in parliamentary debates. And it was all, although they disagreed strongly, it was always very gentlemanly. And I mean, I remember as a child um, a, a meeting Nehru at uh, uh, Palam Airport when Nehru and Krishna Menon were there and they'd come to receive or see off some dignitary. And my mother and I were receiving or seeing off someone and Nehru, they both came very warmly and embraced my mother and patted me on the head and were very warm and avuncular in spite of the fact that my father and they were at loggerheads. Uh, my father also took a very prominent role in the debates um, attacking the government's China policy, which, um, you know, had by then, uh, was then under a lot of fire because the China, of the Chinese uh, border policy and Nehru initially being very friendly to the Chinese, overlooking their rape of Tibet which again my father and Rajaji and Jayaprakash had very strongly opposed and felt India should have intervened in some way. Uh, so Nehru had basically silently supported the Chinese position, although he allowed the Dalai Lama, rather reluctantly allowed the Dalai Lama to take refuge here. And uh, that continued, um, you know, th through uh, the attacks on Nehru's China policy until the Ch uh, Indochina war broke out and uh, India's disastrous defeat in that, which left Nehru very open to attack. By then he was not well and his health was failing too. He had to sacrifice Krishna Menon who had to resign as defense minister. His rivalry with my father went back to their student days. Uh, although he was always very friendly towards my mother and it never became too personal. And uh, uh, then uh, Nehru, uh, you know, was uh, badly wounded by the China debacle. The opposition was very much in the ascendant. And under pressure from the opposition, Nehru then released Sheikh Abdullah a few weeks before he died, and there was an opportunity for a rapprochement. My father was also quite friendly with Ayub Khan, who was then president of Pakistan, and felt there should be a rapprochement through Sheikh Abdullah between Nehru and Ayub Khan in, in, and Kashmir, because Ayub Khan and Pakistan had backed India during the Indochina war and said, we will not take advantage. <clears throat> you can free up your forces on our borders and turn them all against China. We are not going to uh, take advantage, offered help, etc. So that had broken Nehru's hostility to Ayub Khan, which was similar to his hostility to Jinnah. So there was a, a, a tragic moment then when Abdullah flew to uh, Rawal Pindi and had talks with Ayub Khan and then flew back to Delhi and it looked as though there was going to be a deal on Kashmir and ending Indo-Pakistan hostility when Nehru had a stroke and died. So that set the whole process completely back because the successor government had neither the authority nor the will 
to go ahead with that. And uh, so the whole thing was set back. I think Abdullah was sent back to prison. And then, of course, there was the 1965 war with Pakistan.